Okay, well, our next comedian coming up is actually a cousin of mine. She has been doing stand-up since the early 90s. I'm actually not going to say anything real bad, because I don't want to find myself in their set all of a sudden, so let's just give a big warm welcome for Janice Smith. Yeah, he has to be nice to me, because I could get some dirt on him. So we're here to celebrate people with disabilities, and I actually have a disability. I know you can't tell because I look pretty normal, but it's up here. I have a mental illness, and believe me, there's lots of stuff going on up here that you don't want to know about. But what I actually have is OCD. It's obsessive compulsive disorder. I don't know if anybody's heard of that or not, but uh, they call it a repetitive disease. You're, you know, doing things over, and, and I don't know why they call it that, but they call it a repetitive disease because you're doing things over, and I don't know why they call it that. Anyway, some of the symptoms I had were, were different. Everybody's different. And some of the symptoms I had, every, everybody's cool? Okay. I used to uh, have to touch everything with my right foot and my right hand uh, as I was walking down the street or whatever, and it would always make me, you know, slow me down and things like this, and I would always have to look at things out of the corner of my right eye. It was rather embarrassing, and I thought, you know, people are always looking at me, so I'll speed it up and they won't notice. So... Just to give you a demonstration, I'd be walking down the street like this. <laughs> Looked like Quasimodo, but no one noticed me. But actually having OCD is, it can be quite interesting. Um, you've got your cleaners, your checkers, your hoarders, your washers, your worriers, all kinds of different things. We decided one time we'd go on a field trip, a busload of people with OCD. Well, that was interesting. The cleaners wanted to throw everything out. We got on the bus going to the to Grand Forks. The cleaners wanted to throw everything off, and when they did, the hoarders would get off the bus and pick it up and bring it back in. <laughs> we had some confessors that felt they had to confess things all the time, and they were thinking they were going to have to confess everything when we got to the border. The worriers were worrying they were going to go to jail when we got to the border because the confessors were going to say stuff. Cleaners spent three hours in the washroom, so it took us four hours to get to the border, and we just turned around and came back. It was... Uh, wasn't going to work. But have you guys heard of this thing that's been going on lately, this Movember thing with the facial hair and everything? I, I, it's, it's interesting. I'm an administrative assistant by day and, well, cougar by night, but we won't go there. Everybody calls me that, actually. Yeah. Actually, it's just my, uh, the 21-year-olds that I try and pick up in the bar. They call me the cougars. Yeah. And my son's gonna, never going to bring his friends over again, but anyway... No, this November thing, it really bothered me at first because I kept thinking as an admin assistant, people are spelling November wrong. And it bothered me. I thought, does these people not know how to spell? And it really, really separated the men from the boys when this, when this contest started. You know, you'd have one guy that would, after three weeks, had about four hairs. And you'd have another guy after a week, full beard and mustache. And I think some of them had more hair in their ears and nose than they actually did on their lip. But uh, I, I thought it was unfair, though, that they just, you know, made it for men only. Because, I mean, there's a lot of women that are going through menopause. We've got lots of facial hair, you know. Not by choice, necessarily, but that drives me nuts. I have to admit, it drives me nuts. When I see someone who's got some facial hairs, I just want to walk up to them and say, pardon me, do you have any tweezers? And if they say yes, I'll say, then use them. But I don't do that. I just think it to myself in my head. But I've got two kids, actually, a boy and a girl, and I like to have fun with them. I like to kind of embarrass them because, you know, they embarrassed me when they were little with their tantrums. And my daughter um, asked me to come pick her up one day at school. And I thought, okay. She says, all the other parents come, you know, pick up their kids. I want you to. I said, all right, I'll do that. So I was all thrilled. I took some time off work early, and I got there and standing at the school when she comes out, and she comes out and looks at me. She goes, oh, my God, what are you doing here? And I said, well, I came to meet you. I thought you wanted me to come pick you up after school. Oh, my God, you're embarrassing me. Like, could you, like, walk behind me? And I said, well, okay. I walk behind you. I'm Rebecca's mommy. I'm Rebecca's mommy. She didn't ask me to do that again. But she's actually going to be 18 soon, so I decided I'll embarrass her when she's at the bar. You know, I'll just go to the bar she's at and get out on that dance floor and tell everybody I'm Rebecca's mom. I don't think she'd like that either. But anyway, having kids is fun. I have two. I have a son. 
And uh, when he was younger, he was going to the doctor to get his first physical. And he was a little nervous because he wasn't too sure what was going to go on, you know. And he says, he's kind of nervous, and he says to me, well, like, is the doctor going to touch my privates? And I said, well, no, only if you smile and say please. <laughs> you know. You know, and then he heard stories, what the doctor might do. And he says, well, like, is the doctor going to put his finger up my bum? And I said, no, no, with you, he'll put his whole hand up there. <laughs> anyway, good kids, though, good kids. And I have a, I have a mom who's uh, aging. And she uh, actually has two hearing aids, and she finds them very frustrating. She uh, had none of them, neither one of them were working one day, and she said, I'm so frustrated with this hearing aid. I think the batteries must be dead. There's something wrong. And I said, well, she didn't find that funny for some reason. I don't know why. But she was complaining about it quite often. She said, you know, this stupid thing is just a pain in the butt. And I said, you're supposed to put it in your ear. No wonder you're having problems. Anyway, it's kind of fun. I realized I can't speak Starbuckian. I went to get a cup of coffee the other day, and I walked in, and I thought, I just you know, want a cup of coffee, I, you know. But you go to order a grande, latte, mochaccino, mocha, mojito, frappe, blah, 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 with a shot of this and a shot of that. It's like, I just want a cup of coffee. You know, what's with these shots? Just give me a stupid shot of tequila. That'll wake me up in the morning. I don't need much more than that. Actually, talking about my mom, I guess when you get older and you, um, you know, you're, you're alone. My, my mother went to the doctor and uh, at that age, I guess, there's not really a lot of call for someone to want to see you naked. And so her opportunity is when she goes to the doctor. So she gets in there, she's all excited and whips off her clothes and the doctor comes in and he just shakes his head and he says, Betty, I'm the optometrist. Yeah, the gynecologist is down the hall. Anyway, I like to go to the bar. You know, I'm not, not just because I'm a cougar, but I like to go to the bar and have fun. And people watch, and I get such a kick out of people who come in. You know, you, a group of guys will go out for the night, you know, and they're out to have some fun. And beautiful, beautiful woman walks in, dressed to the nines, gorgeous, beautiful figure. And these guys are all eyeing her up. And the one guy says, I'm going to go over and ask her to dance. And his friends are all laughing at him, like, you don't stand a chance, but let's see how this turns out. So he walks over and, of course, asks her to dance. And, of course, she turns him down and he goes back and he says to his buddies, she's a bitch. <laughs> but see, women are like that, you know, because we go to the bar, a group of girls out to have some fun. We see the same beautiful woman, gorgeous woman walk in the room. We know instantly she's a bitch, right? <laughs> we don't have to take any time or ask her. Oh, anyway. So what do you guys think of all these automatic toilets that they have now? Everything is automatic. I hate them. I find it so frustrating. You know, it's like, I'll decide when I'm done. You know, what if I wasn't finished? And then you go out to wash your hands, and all of a sudden you've turned into the invisible person, putting your hand under there, nothing's happening. I think they should have a little hand that comes out and wipes you. I think that would be fair. You know, that would be a good idea. And see, with the men, they could have a little hand that comes out and shakes you. Eh? Then we'll see who takes longer in the washroom. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm coming, honey. Mm hmm Anyway, I went to a uh, superstore the other day, and I was at the self-checkout. I like those normally. I like them a little bit better than standing in line. And... I do find it frustrating, though, because I'm trying to put my stuff through, and this machine is telling me what to do. Wait for an attendant. Put that thing back in the bag, and I'm thinking, I know what I'm doing, and I get very, very frustrated. I almost hit the machine the other day. But anyway, that's probably it for my time, because there's a lot of other people coming up, but I just wanted to say that I think the worst disability anyone can have is probably to not see past the disability in somebody that has one. Thank you. Thank you.